we thank you for your goodness. Father, I thank you so much for our salvation. Yes, Father, without you, I can do nothing. Father, I thank you. I just thank you so much for the love that you have for us. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, we pray for Israel. And Father, we pray for all the other countries that are involved too, Father, that you would, Father, just manifest yourself to them. Father, I thank you for salvation that's happening quickly with many. Father, we just stand in the gap for those that are hurting, the martyrs, Father. We stand in the gap and we lift them up before you, Father. Father, we pray for those that are on the verge of suicide. Father, those that are in such tremendous pain that they don't even know where to go. Father, we thank you for your blood that has cleansed us. Father, I thank you for what you did at the cross because your word says, by your stripes, I am healed. Father, we give you glory for that. Father, I thank you as you give the people ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying eyes to see and ears to hear father what the spirit of god is saying in jesus name amen, amen. all right so here we go hallelujah okay so um we went last not last week but the week before uh I'm just looking at a little bit of my notes real quick. Um, everything right now, I'm excited because God is bringing such revelation, such healing, such deliverance. Uh, I really thank God that how he's teaching us that the mind of Christ has nothing to do with your emotions, but has everything to do with how he thought, how he acted, all according to the will of the Father. So real quick, let's go to Psalms. Now I've got quite a bit of scriptures for you today. Psalms. Um, let's go to Psalms 40. And we're only going to go up to, uh, gosh, uh, 14. That's almost the whole thing. Go ahead and read the whole thing because it's all good. Psalms 40. Psalms 40. And we're going to be in Psalms 40 anyways today. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order if you if i would declare and speak of them they are more than can be numbered sacrifice and offering you did not desire my ears you have opened burnt offering and sin offering you did not require then i said behold i come in the scroll of the book it is written of me i delight to do your will O oh my god and your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O Lord. You yourself know I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. 
O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame who say to me, aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Amen. Do not delay, O oh God. Amen. Okay, so now uh, Psalms is uh, 40 is so good. If you really take some time to really yeah. read it and pull it apart and see what God is doing. But there are two verses I'm going to focus in on Psalms 40. Uh, verse 1, 2, and 3. Three verses. But remember, I'm talking about uh, the desires that God has to develop within us that would bring a holy desire. Again, a lot of people have all kinds of desires. It could be still for a wife, could be for a car, could be for a different kind of body, a healed body. But we have to look at these desires that we have there. Is it drawing you to the will of the Father. And so if it does not, it is an unholy desire. Now, let's go ahead and read in Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3. Uh, Psalms 40, verse just 1 to 3. I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, revere and worship, and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. Okay, so a lot of times we have to really allow the Spirit of God to discern the very thoughts that we have. Because what we think might be God may not be God. Right. So I'm going to give you real quick an unholy uh, desire that people can have. Let's go to, um, where did I write it down? Um, into St. John chapter 18. John chapter 18. Let's get there. We're there, say amen. amen. Okay. Now, again, I want you to see that here, here God is teaching us. He's, uh, the Holy Spirit is teaching us. He's guiding us. And there are actions that we have that we think is the will of God. But we don't realize is in those desires that we have, we can become an enemy of God. Right. And not realize that here we think, I'm doing for God, I'm saying these things, I'm doing these things. And so let's look at uh, John chapter 18, verse, uh, let's go to, let's go to verse, verse 8. And let's go up to, all the way to 18. Okay. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath, Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officer of the Jews 
arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Okay. So, can somebody give me a pen real quick? Uh, I want you to look, and I probably should have went up to verse... Um, verse 6. Go ahead and read 6, to six 7, and 8 real quick. Now, when he said to them, I am he, he drew... Verse 9. Go all the way to 9. I'm sorry. I apologize. Now, when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Okay. So let's go real quick to verse 6. Let's read that. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they went backwards, drew back, lurched backward, and fell to the ground. <clears throat> now let's look at the sword that is in Peter's side. Because we look at here, Jesus, all he said is what? I am he. What happened to the soldiers? They fell backwards by the assailant. Remember, again, we look at, and they answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene, Jesus said, uh, they asked, wait, wait, I'm sorry, in verse 5, and they answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus said unto them, I am he. Judas, who was betraying him, was standing with him. Now, verse 6. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they went backwards, drew back, and what? No. No, no. <coughs> I really want you to pay attention to this. He said, I am what? He. he. How could it be that all he says that I am he, he acknowledged his position. Mm -hmm. he, did he deny it? No. Did he try to protect himself? No. How is it that all he said was just, I am he. And all these soldiers, what? Hello. Yep. Now, let's continue because I want you to see something here because we look at Judas, but we have to look at Peter having a desire to defend right. Christ. Right, right, right. At this point, did he see Jesus speak and see these soldiers? What happened when he saw it? Okay. So verse 7, and then again he asked them, Who are you seeking? And they said to Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus answered, I told you I am he. So if you want me, and if, and I'm in the amplified, if it is 
his only eye in whom you are looking, let these men go their way. Now he's talking about the disciples, okay? So uh, let's go to verse 9 and to verse 11. Go ahead and read that. Thus what he had said was fulfilled and verified. Of those whom you have given me, I have not lost even one. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Therefore Jesus said to Peter, put the sword back into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Hmm. Hmm. Now... <laughs> Let's go back again, because I want you to see something where Peter stood. He saw the miracles of God. He understood when Jesus said, or he was trying to understand when Jesus says, Peter, I'm going to call you what? You're going to be the rock. And upon this rock, not even the gates of hell shall prevail. Now, now think about that. When he said that to Peter, what was he implying? What was he implying? <clears throat> that no matter of the hordes that would come against him, nothing could stop what God has set up. Yeah. Now, has God set up his children? It's, yes, he has. It okay, is. has he set up his kingdom? Yes, he has. He has. Why are Christians running around like, is it God never set us up? Okay, now I want, I want you to keep going because I want you to so see here, there are desires that we have in the kingdom and we're not recognizing they are <coughs> not connected to the will of the Father. And it causes us to do things that are that we become an enemy of Christ right. that causes us to look at the kingdom of God in a progressive <laughs> way. Now remember, he just saw all these soldiers what? Fall back. They fall back. All he said was what? I am, I am he. he. Did he say, I'm coming in the name of the Lord? No. Nope. All he said is, he is he. I am he. Okay? Now he's connecting to the will of the Father, what was purposed for him. Amen. How is it that when people are attacking towards you, what is the first thing you want to do? When people are attacking you, <laughs> defend yourself. <laughs> is it because you don't know who you are? You don't know the Christ that lives inside you. You don't know the power that flows through the very being that he is creating inside you. Now remember, when he talks about, he says, let this mind that was in Christ also be what? In you. In you. Huh. Now let's, I won't go there yet. Now remember, in verse 9, go ahead and read that one more time. I want you to capture by the Spirit what God wants to reveal to you because the church is getting in their position and they have been getting prepared in the positions that they must stand and make the reflection of who he is now reflect the power of Jesus. It is I, or it is He that lives inside me. A lot of people are scrolling that scripture. Greater is He that is in me, and there is nothing powerful happening. That's right. Come on. Come on, though. How is that possible? That's right. It is he that lives inside me. It is he that is developing him by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're lifting around like the enemy is great. Come on. 
Now he has power, but he has very limited power. Now, I got a lot of good stuff here. Yes, that is. Okay, because I want you to see that. <laughs> okay, so let's go to verse 10. Thus what he had said was fulfilled and verified of those whom you have given me. I have not lost even one. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Now, what did Jesus just say? He just said that he hadn't lost one. Yeah. Not one. What did Peter just do? <laughs> now, I want you to look at something that Peter is hearing and thinking that is not of God in the defense of having to yep. protect. Yep. You never have to protect Christ. That's right. You never have to defend him. No. You never have to worry about God's side versus you, who you are. Right. A lot of times, we're more defending ourselves. Right. And a lot of times, a lot of that happens is because we don't know who he is inside us. Now remember, as the enemy starts bringing up the things that he is doing, and God allows it. Now remember, if we go back to the Old Testament, when the enemy was against Israel. God sent his angels and what? Bop. Bop. Took them out. Took the enemy out. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and we're all worried right now. <laughs> no. No. Now, I'm going to give you. Oh, where have I got? I'm going to give you a couple things here. Uh, okay, Holy Spirit. Let me go. And I put down some things for you guys. Now, one of, in Psalms 40, let's go there real quick. Now, I want you to not lose that place, okay? Let's go to Psalms 40. Are we there? Almost. Almost, okay. Now remember, everything that's inside you, the pressure will bring up. Whether we like it or not, it's coming. And God has allowed things to happen so we can see what's inside. So in Psalms 40, are we there? Yes. Okay. Let's read verse 2. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. Amen. Okay. Let's read that one more time, verse 2. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. Now, what I want you to look at, I looked up in the Hebrew when it talks about the horrible <coughs> pit in Psalms chapter 40, okay? And let's let me read this to you. Um, the horrible pit in the Hebrews talks about a pit of noise. Okay, a pit of noise. So in that noise, there's all these voices talking. So now here, you gotta remember. My sheep, know what? His voice. Hear my voice. Hear my, my voice. When he took you out of this pit, there was a place that he took you out of 
that there was only one voice that you were to follow. How is it so many people are going out there and they don't know what voice they actually are listening to? Look at the voice that Peter heard. What did he think he was doing? Helping. <laughs> yeah. He actually felt like he was helping Christ. Like as if Christ needed the help. How many times do we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, don't say that to that person. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's so true. Well, you need to be careful. Now, again, let me let me continue reading. Okay. <clears throat> the pit of noises, or some render it as the pit of destruction. Such was the condition of our... <clears throat> Uh, dear precious Redeemer, who was being, was about to bear our sins of suffering in, in our stead, that our Lord was a man put into a pit and so made to be quieted alone. Now again, what is the one thing that you feel like when you're going through something? <coughs> you feel like you're alone? Yeah, I'm alone. Yeah. Huh. Now, one of the things when Jesus went and he prepared himself to go according to the will of the Father to redeem those that were lost, Everything was about to rise up to have a voice to speak against him. Okay? Let me stop right there. Okay? Because I want you to keep these by like a little nugget. Okay? Okay. The Bible calls the pit in, let's go to, um, in Exodus. Chapter 21, verse 33. Let's go there. There's another word for a horrible pit. Exodus chapter 21. Now remember, I want you to get to the point where you understand these things that are rising, these desires, these things you want to do, where it's coming from if it is not coming from the most high, <coughs> his will that should be engrafted inside you. Okay? So Exodus 21, verse 33. And if a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it. Oh, go, go to the next verse. The owner of the pit shall make it good. Let's go, let's go all, yeah, to 34, okay. He shall give money to their owner, but the dead animal shall be his. If one man's ox hurts another so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money from it, and the dead ox they shall also divide. Or if it was known that the ox tended to thrust in time past, and its owner has not kept it confined, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead animal shall be his own. Okay. Now let's go back <coughs> to verse 30, 33. Let's read that real quick. If a man leaves a pit open or digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money to the animal's owner, but the dead beast shall be his. <laughs> okay, let's stop right there. If a man what? Digs a pit. Okay. Now I want you to hold on to that. He digs the pit. What falls into the pit? Now, when you are doing things, 
that are not according to the will of God, you dig a pit for others to fall into. And I'm just going to give you a couple of things here because I want, I want to bring it. Because I need you to understand that you're getting ready for his coming back. And there are still things that are there that have not left you and you have to see why not. So in, I want you to look at that first pit, okay? Who dug it? He, he did. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 37, verse 24. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Okay, let's read one more verse. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. Now, this story is about who? Joseph. <coughs> Joseph. What did his brothers do because they were envious, they were jealous, they were angry? What did they do? Ah, now. He was so loved by his father. He had the favor of God on him. But yet those that are around him in the family start, what? They get a pit. Yep. They're in unity. Uh, okay? Now remember, I want you to look. Everything has to go by the natural of what is down deep inside. Now, let's go real quick. Now, again, I want you to see something. Now, remember, the preparation of your positioning, what you have to do when you enter into the will of the Father, what is going to happen? There is going to be a pit that is deep down there to stop you from doing the will of the Father that you were destined for from the beginning of time. Now remember, there's the pit that you dig. Now there's the pit that others dig when the calling is upon your life. Not knowing that the pit that they dug prepared him for the calling. Yes. Yeah. Now remember, all these things that people are doing to you, in that Amen. pit, if you're not careful, right. you start having the right. same things that the people that dug for you, <coughs> envy, Ooh. anger, Come on. whatever it is. Mm. They were angry at him. They were jealous of him. He had the favor of his father. He was about to enter into Egypt and feed the nations that were around it. Yes. Remember his position. If you ask me, I will give you the nation. But if we stay worried about those things that people have done to us, right. here comes the enemy. Yeah. Having you start looking the way your enemy looks mm. in your talking, your actions. Is anybody getting what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I want you to see something here. Because when we look at things that people are doing to us, it pulls us out of where we have to stand. Again, when the people look at the wars that are going on, they're trying to find ways that can defend them. <coughs> Who defends?
them to us. The Lord. The Lord. Are you sure? Yeah. Will your actions show if that's true? Whatever people do to you, you must understand that you have already been destined from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. There are things that you're going to go through that are going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But it is to prepare you for what you are destined for. Amen. There you go. Come Amen. on now. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Let's go to Jeremiah, chapter 14. Are you liking this? I yeah, thought it was so good. When I'm, I, I'm like, this is really, really yes. good. <laughs> I'm like, God. See, one of the things that the Lord told me, he says, a true worshiper only will look for the will of the Father. Amen. That they will walk in it. That's yes, it. Amen. They have no other will but his. Yes. That means everything must die. Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with the Father. Yes. Yes. What yes. does a big beautiful car do <coughs> for the Father? Nothing. You know, every good gift is you know from God. But what happens is sometimes when we get this stuff. Yep. It brings up what's actually inside. inside. Yep. Okay. Jeremiah so 14. we go to Jeremiah chapter 14 and read verse 3. Their nobles have sent their lads for water. They went to the cisterns and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty, and they were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Let's go again. Jeremiah. I'm, let me, I'm trying to find my part. Jeremiah 14. Let's read again. And their nobles said. Let's, let's read. Hold on. Uh, okay. Let's read from. It's all good. Verse 7 through 14. O oh Lord, though our inquire in O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We ah, let's stop right there. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Verse six again or seven again. O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us. Do it for your name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against yeah, you. Right. Oh, the hope of Israel, his Savior in time of trouble. Why would you be like a stranger in the land and like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for the night? Why would you be like a man astonished, like a mighty one who cannot save? Yet you, O oh Lord, are in the midst, in our midst, and we are called by your name. Do not leave us. Thus says the Lord to his people. Thus they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet, and therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will remember their iniquity now and punish their sins. Then the Lord said to me, do not pray for this people for their good. When they let when they fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold the prophets say to them, You shall not see the sword, nor shall you have famine. But I will give you assured peace in this place. Now let's stop right there. Let's go back to verse 9. Well, verse 8. And I'm going to take it bit by bit. Okay, so let's read verse 8 first. Oh, the hope of Israel, 
his savior in time of trouble. Why should you be like a stranger in the land and like a traveler who turns aside to tarry for the night? Verse 9. Why should you be like a man astonished, like a mighty one who cannot save? Yet you, O oh Lord, are in our midst, yep. and we are called by your name. Okay. Do not leave us. Okay, so verse 9 says, Why should you be hesitant, inactive, like a man stunned and confused? <laughs> Ah, let me read this one more time. That's good. Why should you be hesitant, inactive, like a man stunned and confused? Watch to look to see how much confusion, when you're dealing with situations, how much confusion is there? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do with these people. What? They're doing all these bad things. God, I'm confused. What should I do next? Now, keep, I'm going to keep going. It says, a man stunned and confused. Now, I want you to look at when a man is stunned and confused. Why is this happening to him? Let's look at the verse. Verse 9. looking at others. Why should you be hesitant? When God goes tells you to go do something, what do you become? Hesitant, hesitant. Or do you just go do it? Come on. I'm guilty of both. Because <laughs> I want you to see something here. Yeah. You don't get up We're outside and say, God, just use me. Yep. <laughs> I want to do your will. I love you, God. You know I'll do anything for you. But when he tells you something, you become hesitant. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now the next word says, confused. Why is that happening? Because you're hesitant? And what? <coughs> ah! How is confusion coming in here? Because you're inactive. The Spirit of God is never inactive. Yep. When He created everything, He created. We don't have a God that sleeps or slumbers. That's right. Okay, let's get going. I want you to put these little things and examine. <coughs> Now, let's go to the next verse and just read that. And the Lord replied to Jeremiah, Thus says the Lord to this people, Judah, In the manner and to the degree already pointed out, have they loved to wander. They have not <laughs> restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. He will now seriously remember their iniquity and punish them for their sins. Okay. Here Jeremiah is talking. God's talking to, to Jeremiah. Let's look to see what's happening to the people. Let's look to see your walk. Again, we look at in the manner to the degree already pointed out, they love to what? <laughs> wander. Mm -hmm. Nah. <clears throat> what does wander mean? Go off course. Mm -hmm. Ah, wait. So you love going off course. Why? Someone hurts you, and the word of God says, well, forgive them. Yep. <coughs> and you're like, okay, I gotta forgive them. But they could go to another church. Look at what they're doing. But you gotta remember, 
when we become hesitant to obey the word of the Lord, it causes something inside of us that we don't realize what we are digging ourselves into and causing the enemy to come in and bring destructions. Now let's keep going. You want me to stop? Oh, yeah, Tell me. No. Okay, now remember, it causes wandering. And they have no what? Restraints. Where? On their feet. What does, when the Lord talks about the six things that he hates, they're swift to what? Swift to run over. Evil. Run to evil. Yes. Could it develop those kinds of feet? Good. You know, a good juicy story. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It says, they have not restraint of feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're doing all the things that you're not supposed to do. But we think God accepts us that way. Oh, come on. Not happening. He's coming for a church without spot, blemish, or what? Yeah. That means when we become the called out, the elect, we are not in a place that we're hesitant with the word of God anymore. And when he says come, what happens? We come. When he says give, when he says lay hands on the sick. Okay, let me keep going. Because I want to show you things that will develop in why you have an unholy desire with things. So, when I get you, verse... <laughs> okay, so read verse 10. Well, let me see. 14. Should I get you? Okay, so let's just read verse 11 and 12. The Lord said to me, do not pray for this people for their good. Though they fast, I will not hear their cry, and though they offer burnt offering and cereal offering without heartfelt surrender to me or by offering it too late, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. <laughs> Let's read 11 and 12 again. The Lord said to me, do not pray for this people for their good. Though they fast, I will not hear their cry. And though they offer burnt offerings and mm. grain offerings without heartfelt surrender to me or by offering it too late, I will not accept them. Mm -hmm. But I will consume them by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. We're doing things that we right. want to do, Come go on. repent, go back, yeah, because it is not heartfelt. Uh -huh. Of a true repentance, we go back to the things that we love to do. So in verse, let's hear verse 13. Then said I, alas, Lord God, behold, <laughs> the false prophets say to them, you will not see the sword, nor will you have famine, but I, the Lord, will give you assured peace, peace that lasts, and the peace of truth in this place. Read one more. Then the Lord said to me, the false prophets prophesy lies in my name. Mm. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, nor have I spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false or pretended vision, a worthless divination, mm. conjuring or practicing magic, mm. 
trying to call forth the responses supposed to be given by idols and the deceit of their own minds. No way. Wow. Wow. Let's go again. Read yes. verse 15 one more time. 15 or 14. Uh, 14, I mean. But you, I want you to see something here. When people are not living right, they don't want to surrender, they don't want to obey. <coughs> They want to go as far as, yeah. and a lot of people try to go as far as they can with little things. Mm -hmm. And so here comes a prophet in town. You're not living right. And they start prophesying what? Good things. No, false. Yeah, false. They prophesy false good things. Let's go back to that verse. Then the Lord said to me, the false prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, nor have I spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false or pretended vision, a worthless divination, conjuring or practicing magic, trying to call forth the responses supposed to be given by idols and the deceit of their own minds. If you don't want to live right and you're prophesying and you're getting dreams, you have to see where they're coming right, from. Right, right. We want to go do this stuff and we're having these visions that we're saying they're from God. <coughs> where did they actually really come from? Another voice. Yeah. Right. Remember all the noises? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That once had you? <coughs> Because you're still tampering into sin and took it lightly with the sin and thinking, God's still going to use me. And he can, but get ready. The development of false prophets are very strong right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Visions, dreams. Prophetic words. Mommy? I just really okay, should I really, really go there? Go See, there. you go need there. to test the spirits. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You have to test the spirits whether they're of God or not. Yep. That means you need to test yourself. When you're getting these things and you're not fully living right, That's where are they coming right. from? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Are they coming from God? Come on. Here's why I got drunk. Mm. Now you just got this powerful prophetic word. Wow. Wow. Okay, I probably shouldn't go there. No, go there. No, 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 no. no. But you know, they need to know. See, we see, gotta remember. Yep. We have a want to have a lifestyle of running wherever we want, doing whatever we want. And thinking we have to defend certain things and cutting the ear off. And God said, wait a minute. Yeah. I didn't send you to do these things. Amen. What did I send you off to do? When he says, <coughs> what did I send you off to do? He starts speaking of John the Baptist. Yeah. What did Jesus say about John the Baptist? The spirit of Elijah is upon him and yes. flows through him. Why? Because everything that seemed valuable became dead to him. Sorry about that. Because I want you to emphasize a true prophet dies to the things in the world. <laughs> it has no more importance and we speak the truth of God's word. Amen. How am I going to prophesy to someone that is so greedy for money and say that God is going to give them the riches? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> When you have lust for money and you get these prophetic words. Yeah, you're pulling on it. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I want you to wake up. It's true. Yeah. 
Because this walk now, either you die to your will and connect to the Spirit of God by truth yeah. and allowing the Holy Spirit to convict you and you submit to it.
Satan was actually trying to do when he tempted him. I'm going to give you three things where when Satan tried to, let's go, let's go over. Um, is it Matthew chapter four? Yes. Keep your fingers still there. <gasps> Matthew chapter four. See, the enemy only has so allotted power. Yeah. He says he's the prince and power of what? The air. The air. Yeah. So he has power. Yes. Okay. Now, in verse, let's go ahead and read that from one. And let's go all the way to verse. Okay. Oh, wait, 11. Then, G then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay. So, I'm going to give you three things where the enemy actually has power to, to mess with you. Okay? But when God starts developing us and taking us through the brokenness, these three things will not have the power that it once had. Now, I'm going to give you number one. Number one is to lead astray. Number two, deceive. And number three, to seduce. These three things were happening in the midst of the garden. Okay? So when we look at Revelations chapter 20, let's go right back there. I'll get delivered. <laughs> okay. So in 20, let's go to verse 2. Oh, wait, wait. Let's go to 1. Let's just read that in the Amplify. Then I saw an angel descending from heaven. He was holding the key of the abyss, the bottomless pit. And a great chain was in his hand. Okay. When the word of God says that when you're chained up, who's able to break that chain? Jesus. The anointing. Okay. What breaks the what breaks these chains? The anointing. The anointing breaks 
Well, it breaks the chains. Okay, so now we look at the chain that the angel, that when Jesus went to hell, he was able to what? Strip the powers. So, now we're looking at when in verse 2, let's read that. Okay, wait, wait. So, in verse 1, we start looking at when God is transforming you and changing you and connecting you through the power of the Holy Spirit as he becomes your comforter, your teacher, your guider, okay? He teaches you in the way of what has already been done. He's not going to teach you anything else outside of what Christ already destroyed. So he's going to teach you the power of God never to be chained again. Now, when I just gave you those couple things concerning the pit, uh, and there are other things I haven't gotten to yet, but when the enemy had bound you in the horrible pit, and here God strips you and changes you, right? Yes. He takes you out of the place, Keep holding there. And uh, you hold there and then go back to um, in Psalms 40. Verse 3. I see it all here and I'm like, okay, I take this slow Holy Spirit. It's all like, like yeah, it's just so good. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Okay, so in Psalms, read me two and three. He also, he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Okay, go back to that scripture again. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Okay, now remember the first thing I said to you. The enemy does not have the power to mislead you. Where did he just set your feet? So when God is delivering you and setting you free, when we allow the Holy Spirit to do what he has to do, he's bringing it to a place that is solid. Okay? When he is placing us there and has sat us there, again, we have to look at these desires that are stronger than staying in the place where God wants you to be. What happens? If these desires that you once had now start coming up, it pulls you out of the place where he set you. Okay? Now let's look at how when someone desires a home, okay? What will they do for the sake of a home? Sacrifice. Sacrifice? Sacrifice? Yeah. What will they tend to run to to secure that? Money. Money. Okay. Now, again, I want you to see something here. Pulls you out, sets you on the rock. Now, here comes the testing to deceive you if you work enough, you can have your house. Right? Is that truth in God's word? No. 
Okay. Let me say that again. The desire to have something will slowly deceive you to take you off the rock. You got to remember, these things have to die. And once, if they not die, here comes the people that have been preaching the prosperity message in a perversive way. So if you get this amount of money, you get a what? Big house. Whatever you're desiring, if you get this amount of money, what happens? You'll be blessed, but we should be more blessed already. Now, I'm not saying the sowing is bad. That's right. right, right that's right. right. But where the heart is pulling from, yeah. it is coming from a place of deception that once had you. If that place does not go through the fire to purge out what is there, what happens? If it doesn't purge, Overtake you. Yeah. Overtake. It will overtake you. Yeah. How many people leave God because they didn't get what they, what they were believing for? Mm -hmm. I want you to see something here. They didn't get their husband. Mm -hmm. They didn't get their house. Mm -hmm. They didn't get their healing. They didn't. What happens? They leave God. Somewhere, that desire had never died and yep. kept alive. Mm -hmm. Remember, the pruning must happen in the fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I don't. I, I don't want to confuse you, but I just. Uh, yep, I get you. Because there are things that we want. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then I'll add all these things, okay? According to what? His, His will. will. His riches. Now, let's look back into the desert. What Satan is trying to offer Jesus. What's he trying to offer him? Riches, food, power. power. Yeah. Okay. Now, is that good? No. You just got it. Yeah. Okay. Now, remember, when you are off course with God and what he called, see, every job that God ordained you to be at has fruit or has people that have to get to their yeah, place. Right, right, right. So you are the one that stands in the gap to minister. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you got that job and you started good that you wanted to minister, what got in your way to stop that? What kind of in the way? Right now, I'm going after the little foxes. Come here. You got time to say something? No, 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 no. I, I, I. Okay. When Jesus walked to do His Father's will, did He at any point say, "I'm overworked"? <laughs> Uh, at any point did he get burned out in doing the father's will how is it that you're getting burned out and feel overworked is it because now you're doing the things in the flesh and you're drawing from a power that is not from God Yes. Yeah. Now remember, again, we have to look at 
when God is breaking chains, they're not for them to come back and right. chain you back up. That's right. So what happens is now we look through other eyes. Mm -hmm. When Peter wanted to do the will of the Father, he brought something in through the natural and tried to defend Christ. And all he said was what? I am he. Then what happened? What could the sword do that what he did? Compare them. Compare them. I want you to compare them. What causes death? The natural defense is nothing like the power of God. And we're seeking for a power that is according to the lusting of the flesh, and it cannot be. I got all these notes here. Because I want you to see something here. You have to wake up and ask the Lord. I'm saying, God, take the veil off yes. my eyes in whatever arena that I am not seeing correctly. That's right. Amen. That's right. Why do I feel bewildered in areas that I should not be feeling bewildered? Why do I feel like I don't have strength? Isn't that the spirit of God that the joy of the Lord is mine? Oh, We're looking at on. kingdom power in igniting you. Praise the Lord. Yep. Igniting you and transforming you yes. to a person that is not like this world. That's, oh, come on. Yes. Come on. Is my time up? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. so, yeah, 11, 20. 20 after. Okay. When the voices were, when you were taken out of this place of darkness, the power of darkness. Now, remember I said to you that the enemy is the prince and the power of the air. Remember I told you that. Now, let's look at when you were in the pit, these noises are where you drew your power. Where did you draw your power? From the, From the prince and the power yeah. of the yeah. air. Wait a minute, that's not possible. I wasn't a Satan worshiper. Yeah, come on. Okay, come on. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I got a lot here that I want to take it slow with you. Because I don't want you getting confused on that. That's right. Come on. Take it slow. <laughs> but see, you got to remember, when confusion is there, it's going to fight against the power of God. Because God is wanting to bring out this world's thinking drawn out by his spirit. Now, we look at the child that when... Uh, the woman came, was it the woman or the guy, that came to him and said, my child is sick. Oh, yeah. so and it's causing him to throw himself in the That's fire true. and in the water. Okay? And here's the disciples. And what do they say about the disciples? They couldn't guess about it. Why? Why? Is that unbelief? Yeah. Yeah. They won't. They have no unbelief. They have no unbelief. Let's go back. Yeah. They won't. They have no unbelief. Now I want you to see something here. Yeah. They mimicked Jesus. Yeah. In everything that he did. Yeah. Right. But when you mimic something, it doesn't work the same way. Right. 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 Now remember, what happened to the sons of Sceva? They got beat up. <laughs> they got beat up. When they went to do the same thing that Peter and Paul were doing, mm -hmm. what happened? They were overtaken. Yep, they were overtaken by the demons. 
gauge for them. What happens when you're going and working with people? What's happening when you come back? It's tearing you. It's ripping at you. Mm. Now, remember, the mind says, well, you know, if I wouldn't have been doing that, God's word, this wouldn't be happening to me. Wow. Deception. Yep. See, when God's, again, God will send you in to see where your obedience is. Yep. The testing of your faith yep. in the word of the Lord now is going to expect something to happen. Now, whatever is inside there that is not of God will now start rising up when you pray for people. Okay. How many are confused yet? I'm looking at George's face. <laughs> Okay, because I'm throwing a lot, but I want to show something that when Jesus went to hell and he stripped the powers of Satan, right? What happened there? He was able to take the what? Keys to hell and death in the grave. Do you have those keys? We're he's supposed to. He's, 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 we have all power and authority, authority given to us. We're joint heirs with Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ yeah. to everything we've got. Yeah. Now, go pull that scripture for me. Which scripture was it? Because I want you to see yes. something here. He has given you the keys of death and how he has given you all authority. But when we seek after a power, when we have not allowed God to transform us into his likeness or his identity, his transformation, that the fruits will distinguish you from others. The power doesn't distinguish you. It is the fruit. Okay. Romans 8, 17. Mm-hmm. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Let's read that again. Let's read it in the Amplified real quick. And if we were, if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. Okay, let's read verse 17 one more time. And if we are his children, now remember, one of the biggest things that you're seeing right now is the manifestation of Satan's children they're manifesting big time now. You can actually tell who's their father now. Yes. Now here comes the manifestation of who our father is. Now, look at this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now let's read the next verse. And I wanted to read it in Amplified, but I shot to King King. Let's read uh, 17, 18, 19. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us. 
and conferred on us. Let's go back to that verse again, verse 18. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. Verse 19. For even the whole creation, all nature, waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known, waits for the revealings, the disclosing of their sonship. Okay, now we are in the midst of the time that the revealing is unveiling now. <coughs> You're seeing the children of Satan and the children of God. Now you're looking at, and you're going to love me for putting us on here, is that here, people want to have a God that they all serve, but just call him different names. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So when we serve that kind of God, what happens? There's too much confusion. Mm -hmm. Confusion, division, division, Now, when you're dealing with people and there's confusion, division there, why is that happening? Yeah, listening to the wrong. Yeah, the wrong voices. Okay. Now, you need to start marking these. That when there is division, now somebody just told me today, I love being in the presence of God. I love when I come into the church and I feel the presence of God. But then when I go home, it's like, I, I can't find no peace. How is that that it cannot Carry you in the place where darkness is. And that, that, go ahead. Well, I, I think it's mainly believe in a lie. It's a lie. Now, remember, in the placing of suffering, the manifestation of who he is most now manifested. Why is it that you cannot sense the presence of God illuminating? And one of the biggest reasons that I feel that, that happens is because we're not carrying his presence in right. the room. We're experiencing it in the church, but we're not carrying it into our homes. We're not using that authority in our homes. We're not praying and keeping <coughs> our homes spirit filled. Okay, let's go again. Yeah. Okay. Because you're going by a feel. You yeah, should know. It should be a knowing <laughs> yeah, yeah, that God is know. there with you because his word says he would never leave you nor forsake you. Now, the mind of Christ does not go by your feelings. Yes, when you go into the place where everybody will not serve God, what happens? What starts getting in the way? Your flesh. Yeah, the flesh. Yeah. Your feelings. feelings. You got to go into that boardroom. How is it that the testing right there is what aggravates you and you get mad because they're not changing? Ooh, it's in our basement. Huh? <coughs> wow. Come on, Tony. You know the truth, and the truth is something Amen. great. The fruit <laughs> should develop in us. We should carry that love. I like that. Does the love of God change in that moment? Yes, it does. It's, yeah, you get frustrated. It shouldn't, but it does. Shouldn't, but it, does. it shouldn't, but how is it that we have allowed it? Because you're not walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're walking in the flesh. How is it that these people can bring up something out of you? How can 
Okay, bring something up out of here. Ah, spit it out now. <laughs> Lydia, go ahead. It's something we haven't surrendered or gave to God, or sometimes we don't want to give it to God. We want to hang on to it. Ah, now we look at, now remember I told you that back in Revelation, <coughs> there are three things that the enemy will bring in that he brought the same timing that he did with Jesus. For you to stray away, now remember, how many people just go hide themselves and go seek God? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. Right. And they can't do it amongst the people that are around them. <coughs> now, most people will not say this, but is it in the timing of being ashamed of the gospel? Because it is the what? Power of God. Mm -hmm. What pulled you back? I am not ashamed of the gospel. But when you're in the midst of that, what happens? Strongholds. Yep. It's feelings, emotions. Yep. It's the flesh. It's the soul. <laughs> okay, come on. I want you to see something. <laughs> you're in the midst of this and you're reflecting who Christ is. How is it that the Christ inside you now regresses? Where you focus your mind. Again, is it possible in that one area right there was being exposed. See, spirits manifested every time Jesus walked. Did it stop him? Nope, no. Why is it stopping you? What power of darkness has the right to manifest at that time that he's having a heyday. They only have a right if you have an open door. Go ahead. Come here, son. It's just an example. And I'm going past my timing. Would this be an example? You got to go. Um, on Tuesday. Um, I was at work and thinking, you know, uh, <coughs> the well, anyway, it's just been getting um, difficult in a sense, you know, um, and I was having a really rough day um, of girls work and a lot of stuff was manifesting and rising up in me where I wanted to get frustrated and I was praying as I was working throughout the day and at the end of the day, I go into the break room and I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm thinking, my, praying to myself, I'm like, Lord, these things are starting to rise up. I was getting overwhelmed. I wanted it. It was Martin to draw me back to like, oh, I... Just want to drink, yada, yada, yeah. So I got the bills. I said, you know, I said, I'm over it today. I said, but you know, I said, I almost, I was thinking, I could see the image of me getting something to drink to suck, um, to to do my old nature. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what? I said, no. I said, because I know that whatever ever's in me, and I'm sharing it with these girls that are unsaved, and I said, but you know, I said, I've been praying all day, and I said, whatever's in me, I said, I should not be this way. I said, because God is, you know, great in our ministry. And one of the girls, she's like, don't do it, Sonia. Just don't. You stick with God. And I go, well, I mean, no. I go, but I, I believe, you know, I, I know I have victory. I go, but that ugliness in me was rising up, and I know I have to get rid of that. So is that like an example or, or something like that then? Now, remember. When we are tempted, we're tempted of what? Of our flesh. Go read that again. When we are tempted, we're tempted of what? 
our own lives. Could it be that the lust you don't want to let go of? Look at an unbeliever is telling you, don't do it. <laughs> Wake up. And you're like, okay, I won't. Wait a minute. The roles are reversed. Okay, well, we'll continue tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Hallelujah. There's a lot I gave you. A lot on your plate. Because I need you to understand the importance now to surrender everything to God. Everything must die now. You have to just make a decision in whom you're going to serve. All these holding on to little bits of things is going to keep you from the kingdom of God. See, the seriousness of waking up is not there yet. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for so much for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, where we come so short, Father, that we would depend and solely depend on you and surrendering everything. Father, you have already paid the price for us. Father, we bind those spirits that have brought confusion and frustration. Yes. Father, for you are truth. And when we hear truth, the truth sets us free. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you for the awakening of the saints, Father, that they're waking up. Yes. And they're saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Father, that they are examining where they stand now. Father, that they understand that they cannot do anything without you. Yes. Father, we ask, Father, that you would create a right spirit, a clean spirit within us. Mm -hmm. And Father, we say, take not your Holy Spirit from us, yes, Lord Jesus. for he is precious and holy. Father, we repent for our murmuring and our complaining, Father. We thank you for your precious love. Father, we thank you for you are our hope. You are all that we are. When we look into your eyes, all the love that you have for us, Father, that it would manifest through us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.